Hi, welcome. Welcome to this session today. Um, we're broadcasting live out of uh, Adobe UK, which is the uh, first time for, for a long time, which is great. My name is Richard Curtis and I work for Adobe in the UK um, and my role is a digital imaging consultant. And today we're going to show you how to work quickly and effectively with Photoshop CC on Creative Cloud and 3D. So let's launch Photoshop and get to it. So 3D in Photoshop is really, really easy. And there's a lot of misconceptions about 3D and how, and how hard it is. So what I'm going to show you today is, um, is a kind of an idea that I had around a, an adventure trip to, to Mars. And rather than just showing you the features and functions of, of 3D, I thought I'd show you that while creating something. So I'm just going to create a new canvas. So just 1024 by 768. And it's actually just in 8-bit, so it's going to be nice and, nice and quick. The first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to work with text in 3D. So we'll just bring up the text tool. Now one thing to notice with 3D in Photoshop is everything is around the Move tool itself. So the Move tool inside CS6, when it was released last year, had all of the 3D embedded inside it. So let's just put a little bit of text on the screen. And let's call it Mars. I'm going to come back to it a little bit later on. I'm going to change the color of this to be a little bit Mars-like, so it's going to be a bit orange. So let's do that quickly and press OK. Now, to get this piece of text into 3D is really, really simple. All I have to do is push the 3D button at the top of the screen. I do have access to the whole 3D menu, and I'm going to come to that in a few minutes. Let's click the 3D button and convert this into 3D. And you see Photoshop does a very quick job. Now, the reason why Photoshop is doing such a fast job with 3D is it's all on the graphics processor. And we did this since the release of Photoshop in May last year. And I can demonstrate that by just grabbing hold of the environment and moving everything around. You can see this moving in real time. Whilst I'm in my 3D space, I want to show you a little bit around the 3D environment itself. You see the yellow box around the outside of Photoshop. This is actually showing my current view. And I may want to change this, and I can see the blue box, which is showing the environment view, so you know exactly where you are inside 3D. Let's look at the current view again. And you can see is when I hover over this 3D text, I get the cage. And the cage is giving me access to controls that I have of my 3D object. So if we just navigate around these, and I can show you what we have. We have in the center the uniform scale, which I can just drag and drag or put and downwards to increase the size of my 3D object. I can then move this object around 3D space by just using the widget to do so. You can also see at the back of this text, the shadows, and in real time I can move the lights around. So I go to the right hand side at the top and I can see my infinite light. Now, the nice thing about 3D and Photoshop in this version in, inside CS6 and CC is that I get a lot of the materials and properties of 3D created for me. So, for example, I get a shadow catcher for me, I get the um, ground plane created for me, and I also create an infinite light created for me as well, as well as many, many other things as well, especially around creating textures and, and this type of thing on the 3D object. So, I pick up my light and I can now see the widget on the screen, and the widget is now movable. And you can see as I move this around, you can see the shadows are moving. I can also press the Shift key, and the Shift key will enable me to move the shadows in real time as well, so I can get the shadows exactly where I want them. If I just go back to my, my Mars text for a second, I can then press the V key, or on the Properties panel, I can use these icons next to the Type icon. So if I press the V key, I go to the Next widget, and the Next widget is allowing me to control the text while I'm actually in context with it. So I'm not having to move sliders around. So I can change the extrusion and make it somewhere I want it to be, somewhere there. I can also change the taper, I can change the bend, and I can move this in real time. I can also change the twist as well. If I press the V key again, I can then change the beveling on this text by increasing the beveling to be nice and sharp or less so. I can change the bevel angle, can also change the inflation and the inflation angle. And I can do that and create a nice little bit of softness around this text. If I look on the 3D panel in the right hand side, notice that I have the 3D workspace enabled. On the 3D panel on the, on the bottom right, you can see that the breakdown of the 3D text is, is there for me. So I can see the front inflation. 
If I click on each of these, it will take me to the relevant space or place on the 3D object. So there's my front inflation, my bevel, my back and my inflation material. And we'll come into these a little bit later on. You can also see I have my infinite light there and I can see what we talked about earlier, the current view, the scene and the environment. I can also, while I'm here, I can change, change properties about my text. So let's just click on the front of this text object and you can see on the top right hand corner now I have properties about the material of this text. So let's just change the color of the diffuse layer and go in, pick up my picker. Notice this is the 32 bit color picker and we'll come back to this a little bit later on. And I can change the text and you can see that changing as I move around. But only that face of the 3D object changes, not the bevel or the extrusion. I can also change the properties around how much shine this has of the lights or how much the light will shine off that piece of text or how much reflection this object will have based on the light or the opacity of reflection and these can't be seen all the time on the text while you're while you're working with 3D sometimes you have to what's called render the 3D object and rendering the 3D object is really simple I can either render the full screen but it will be the big composition that may take a little while so if I just use my selection and draw a rectangular marquee around the text and then hit the render key, which is just this little icon in the corner here. I will then perform a render and you can see now that as the light hitting the 3D text, it's now starting to render all those shadows and highlights out for me. Okay, so that's my first piece of text done. I'm going to come back to that in a little while when I finish my, when I'm working with my composition. So back to the move tool. And what I'd like to do is just add some more context. So I said this was a Mars scene. So let's just add some layers in there and create my scene. So I'm going to say place. And I'm going to choose a background. Now, I was in Iceland a few months ago and took some pictures there. And I just want to find one that I can use for this exercise. Okay, that's quite nice. So it brings it into Camera Raw, at which point I can then modify my highlights, modify my shadows, so my white point and black point of the image. And don't forget, because I'm in Camera Raw, I can come back to this at any point in time because it is just a smart object. Okay, press OK. And place that object into the scene. It's going to crop the canvas and you can see there that I have my scene that I'm going to use. Now the idea is I'm going to have some points on the scene, I'm going to put some space rockets in and those space rockets are going to be like the houses that I can have on my Mars adventures. So I'm going to put that at the back of the stack so you can now see my text come through. So now you're seeing the text being rendered against the surface and using my widgets I can just place my text where it needs to be. Now, this is also producing a shadow on the ground plane, which I actually don't want in this case. So I'm just going to remove the shadows from this shadow catcher. So I'm going to say cast shadows. No. One of the things I need to do, though, is to tell the 3D engine where in the scene the vanishing point is going to be. So I now I need to move the 3D engine into the vanishing point grid. Now I have my picture to set my vanishing point up. I'm just going to create the vanishing point. So while Whilst on the 3D layer, I can go into the filter, vanishing point, and I can draw a vanishing point of the scene. Actually, now I want this to be quite shallow, and I can just move this around to create that shallow depth of field that I need for this. Normally, you'd have maybe a street scene or some other elements in the scene that would enable you to create the ground play much more effectively, but I can kind of guess where the ground plane is by just using the contours of the land to do that for me. If I press OK now, nothing will happen. That's because Photoshop remembered where my vanishing point is, but the camera that I'm seeing, and you can see the camera here because there's the ground plane and the text, that is not on, the, the, the camera isn't on the ground plane of the vanishing point. So let's just change that now. Back to my 3D menu, I just go to the current view icon, which is the camera, and change the current view of the camera to be the vanishing point grid. And you can see when I do that, 
the text moves around and puts it squarely on the vanishing point grid. But now I know, so every object I add in 3D space will be on the same grid. I'm just going to make this a bit smaller and move this around. I have a lot of control over 3D inside Photoshop, but I'm just going to put this into the right place for now. It may move later. One of the things in 3D is that you do tend to move things around quite a lot. So we've set the extrusion, we've set the actual texture and the color of the 3D text. We set the vanishing point and the ground plane with the photograph. So the idea here is that we're blending in that 3D scene into a 2D scene. So what I want to do now is to, before I start adding more effects of the Mars scene, is to add a couple of places I'm going to use to, um, to house people. So I'm just going to turn that 3D layer off and turn the photograph off and just go back to a clean canvas and create a new transparent layer. On that transparent layer, I'm now just going to draw, using the pen tool, an outline of my, what I'm going to have as a spaceship. So let's pick up the move tool. I'm going to pull a grid in, sorry, pull, pull a guide in, and that guide's going to show me, if I turn the guides on, okay, guides are on, and pull a new guide in. That's going to show me where I'm going to use the symmetry of the, of the spacecraft. So I pick up the pen tool and place a mark on here and then I'm going to create a Bezier curve. The Bezier curve is going to be the outline of the spaceship. So let's have it something like this. I'm just going to create a very flat base for this. I'm just going to use the Alt key and pick up the handle and move the handle into a vertical position by using the Shift key as well. And then create a point which is the base of the spaceship and I'm going to use the Shift and Alt again and put a straight line in. So now you can see I've just created a very, very simple half side of my spaceship. Now when I extrude this into 3D, I'm going to have the, the, the extrusion wrap around. So actually it creates both sides as a round. So this is something called lathing, something you'd achieve just on a, on a lathe. So it's going to be a round spherical object, but you can have anything um, set up to do that. You could create a cup or you could create pretty much whatever you wanted there. So here's my object, and I can right-click on this, and at the bottom I can convert the path to the extrusion. And you can see there, if I just move this around, so I'm just in the current view mode, and I can just drag my object around, you can see there it's just basically a very simple shape. But it's a shape that's going to work well in this example. So I'm just going to turn that guide off, because I don't need that now. And I'm just going to go to my 3D layer. So in the 3D layer here, on the first layer, you can see I have the texture mapping. Now what I want to do is I want to revolve this around the axis to create the shape. So I'm going to use the V key, and the V key is going to be the second widget, and I'm going to use the bend. If I use the bend, you'll see if I pull this around, it creates the object on itself, which isn't really very good because that's going around the center point and that's not really what I want it to be. So I need to reset what's called the deformation, and the deformation is how that extrusion will wrap around itself. So the top right-hand corner, you can see I have the deformation, and currently it's set to the center. I'm gonna set the deformation to the right-hand side, and you can see there straight away that the actual, the position of the extrusion has moved. I can then take my vertical angle and just do this using the, the numbers, because it's nice and easy, and press it zero. And then I can just wind the horizontal angle up. And you see as I do this, it creates a closed shape. Okay? That's at 360 degrees, which means it's gone completely around. There is my 3D object. And I can then move my light source around and get the lights exactly where I need that to be. And the great thing about this is, of course, is if I click on the object, I can then edit the source and go back edit the source and go back to the object and the pen tool. This is a pre-build of Photoshop CC before we leave on, release on the 17th, so anything could happen. Just give it one second. And there you see, we go back to the pen tool, 
at which point then we can, we can reselect and we can make modifications. We can then move things around, we can change the shape, and when we do that, we come back to the main scene, we can then save that, and that will then change the size and the shape of the, of the object that we've created. So let's put this object into that two, 3D scene. As we turn the other layers on, this layer won't interact with the text. So for example, if we change to the Move tool and try and move this around, we can do, but it's not interacting with any other objects in the scene because that is not part of the text scene. So let's merge them together. Now, these may move because of the way that the cameras are set for each object. So if we select, shift select the layer one, which is the object that we have, and then shift select the Mars layer, we can then use a 3D menu to merge the 3D layers together. I can then move them both at the same time, or I can click on one object and move each object at a time. And you see as I move this around, the shadows at the background here will start to impact on the objects behind it. Okay, So let's just move this into position. You can see the ground plane is now cutting through the object. So let's just change the size and the shape of this object. I can also use the 3D menu to move objects to the ground plane. And that will position it exactly where I need it to be. Go change the size of that to make it much smaller and have that just sit right at the edge. Just there. I'm going to use my widgets again. You have to move things around slightly to get it where I need it to be. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to move the word Mars out of the way. That's great. So what I want to do now is to duplicate this and create some texture for this for this um, for this place. So I'm just going to the object itself. And double click on the object to get the properties. And in the properties, I can then change the material type because I want to have some reflection of this material type. So I open up the material type list. I'm doing this by using the little icon at the side of the materials. And you may notice it's a large list. And then down here, I'm going to have my metal iron. And you can see as I sort of choose a metal iron there, the reflection starts to appear. So if I now move the lights around, you can see the lights start to refract and reflect in that 3D object. What I also need to do is put a texture on this object as well. So I just go to my diffuse layer and say edit texture. What you then see is the actual texture element of the 3D object. So let's just say arrange tiles so I can see them both side by side. And what I want to do is just put a piece of texture on this, on this object. So I'm going to say file, place, and then I'm going to pick up something here. Let's pick up this for example. I'm going to place this in. I notice it's very small compared to the size of the original canvas. So I can just use my handles of the object, use the shift and alt and drag this to make it bigger and then fit that into the scene. I may also want to add some other things into it as well. I may want to add a logo for example. So I can choose a new transparent layer, file, place. I may want to choose an Adobe logo. This one here, it's just a PNG, and bring that in and put that here. Now I know that the right hand side is the base of the actual object, so I'm going to have to change this, I'm going to have to move this around, I'm going to use the shift key to put it into position, and move this around and place where I need it to be, press OK, and then close this down. When I close this down, this will save this piece of texture inside the 3D object as a PSB file. And I save that and you can see now that the object has been changed and the texture is now appearing actually on that, on that object. Now just for a few seconds longer, I just want to change this to have multiple objects because we want to make it like a photograph. We want to have objects either side of the frame so we can, we can see like a view and use it as a picture, use it as a frame, frame the scene. So in my 3D layer, you can see now I have my text layer. If I highlight this, you can see it highlight on the screen and you can see my object layer. New in Photoshop CC in June 17th, on June 17th, is an ability to create duplicate objects. If I right click, you can see duplicate object, and if I duplicate that, I will then get 
another object that I can use off this one. Now this is completely independent and anything I do to my original object will not have an impact on this new object. Let's just put it out of shot there. I also have a way to create an instance object. An instant ob instance object is a child of the main object. Anything that happens to the main object will also happen to the child object. So I can do that as well. But I'm just going to choose another duplicate and use a bit of speed here and take a duplicate of the object we just created. I'm going to put this in the corner. So you can see how quickly you can work with 3D inside Photoshop for Creative Cloud. Okay, I want to make sure that this back object here is actually blending into the scene. If I just turn off the marquee tool, you can see it doesn't blend very well. So I'm going to just very quickly go back to my layers palette, create a mask. And I can create a mask and I can just use my, my brush tool. So press the B key and make sure the foreground and background color I'm painting with black because white's going to reveal and black will conceal. So I need to paint with black to hide a little bit of the bottom to make sure it blends in with the texture of the, the ground. So I use the D key to reset the foreground background colors and the X key to have black in the foreground. Change the size of my brush, make it nice and soft if I need to do to blend that in and just paint away a little bit of the bottom so it fits into the scene. Okay. The final thing I want to do is just add another element to this to this scene. And I want to add a little alien. So I'll say so I need to just park on my 3D menu and go back to the move tool. And in the 3D menu, I can say new 3D layer from file. And I'm going to pick up an alien called Roger and open Roger and bring him also into the scene. Now he's currently just a 3D printed object. He's actually an STL file. And I'm just going to bring him in and just make sure he's in the scene. Just change the size of him and I can rotate him around and see everything about Roger. And you can see the lights hitting him quite nicely. But for Roger, he's a bit boring painted white. I want to add some, um, some texture to him. So I want to go and create a, I want to paint on the texture, on the UV mapping. So what I'm going to do is go to my 3D panel and, sorry, go to my layers panel, go to my 3D object and the diffuse layer, open the diffuse layer up into a second window. And you'll see that there's nothing there. There's no mesh for me to paint on. So I want to go and create a new mesh. So close that down. And then in the 3D menu, I'm going to say regenerate UVs. And regenerate UVs will look at the 3D object and generate me the mesh. It's giving me an option to create a low distortion mesh or a fewer seams mesh. I'm just going to choose a fewer seams mesh. It does that in the background. So now I can open up my diffuse layer again. And you can see in my diffuse layer now, the mesh of the object. So let's move into the window and arrange that tile view so we can see that again side by side. At this point in time, I want to be able to paint on either both sides of the object. So choose my brush again. I also need to make sure they're the same bit depth. So there's eight bit depth, there's eight bit depth, which is fine. Choose my brush tool and I may want to look at my swatches and see if I have any nice swatches in there that I want to use for this. I have a few greens over here, so I can pick a green and use a green color. Now, on Roger, it may be that I want his whole body to be green. So I'm just going to paint on his body. Now you can see as I'm painting, you can see the actual cursor is moving around. So this is called Live Paint inside Photoshop CC. And this is available in June, on June the 17th as well. And I can paint. Now I can paint on either side. So you can see that I'm painting on the right hand side here as well. If I switch over and assume that I'm in the same bit depth, I can change the size of my brush. And I can paint the rest of his body. Now maybe that his eyes need to be a different color. So I just need to part on his eyes and his eyes are just over there in the bottom, in the middle right hand, right hand of the scene. So I'm just going to zoom in and you can see there I've got an eyelid of Rogers that may need to be a darker green. So I choose green and I choose a darker green. Make sure I have a small brush. And now I can just paint 
very quickly. Over there. And gives you a second one. Paint over here. And it may need to be that his eyes may need to be black as well. So I'm just going to zoom in on the other side. So I can work very quickly. Change this to be black. Zoom right in. Get right down to the to individual pixels. Change the size of my brush to be quite small. And paint black. Into his eyes. And the same the other side. Then I can finish painting the rest of Roger. I'm just going to pick up the, go over here, pick up the brush, change the front color with the green that I used previously. Change the size of my brush and just paint the rest of its head out. And I can switch between both sides now. Do that very quickly. Any kind of precise work, I can just rechange the size of my brush. I have a fully painted. fully painted model. Once I close this down again and press the save, I can then position Roger into position. So, but you can see here that it actually is in front of this, the other objects because he's not merged into the scene yet. He's still on his own separate layer. So let's blend him into the scene by shift highlighting those two layers, 3D, merge 3D layers. And just because of the size of the, of the, of the, where the camera is and the size of the mesh, it puts it in a different place. I just need to move that around. So I can just click on the object and just make him bigger or smaller. You can see there now he's too big. You can see the, high, the shadow is appearing over here. So I can just use my secondary view to find out where he is, to make sure that's in the top view. And you can see there are the arrangements of the objects. So I can then move him around to get him as I want him to be, which is about there. And just get him out of the way of the light. And I quite like the fact that you've got a little arm over the other side over here. Now it may be that the light's in the wrong position based upon the scene, so I can just go to my infinite light now. And the infinite light now reflects on all objects in the scene. So I'm going to put it over here because I want that shadow to appear just over there, but not on the text. But I may also want to have another light, the other side, because it's a bit dark on this side of, of Roger's head. So I'm just going to go to my 3D menu, go to light, new infinite light, and pull it over to the side. Now you'll notice it's really bright, so I want to change the, side, the, the brightness of this. So on the properties of the light, on the right hand side I have the intensity. Change that down to about 30%. And you can see it just softens this light for me. Now, I just want to go back to my text layer and I want to change my text layer. So the beauty about having 3D is at any point in time you can change anything you need to. So I can go and change my 3D, I change my original 2D text in my 3D model and then when I've finished editing my 2D text it will then go and change the 3D extrusion. So go to the edit source on the properties panel of the text section and I want to say Mars Adventures. I could change the text, I could change the font. Notice this font here is a Futura condensed. This actually came from the Creative Cloud using Typekit. So I got a desktop font from Typekit into Photoshop that I'm now using across multiple machines. And I can synchronize those using synchronized settings. So I can go to Photoshop Services, Photoshop User ID Synchronized Settings and make sure that appears in my work environment. I press OK and save this into the, three, into the file as a PSB object. And there you have my text. Now I may need to move things around because now I've got shadows and multiple things in the scene. Or I may need to change the size of this and just move this around and make it fit where it needs to be. Just move my secondary view out of the way. 
you can see that now it's starting to clash with the other object. So I can put him into place. And again, you may need to just move things around because they may start to have an impact on where they are. Okay. But that's okay. Make it a little bit smaller. Perfect. Okay. Now I want to show you something in a new Photoshop and I want to change this so that actually this has illumination. Remember before when I changed the object properties of these three objects to be based on iron steel. Well iron steel as a material has certain reflective qualities. What I'm able to do now inside Photoshop for CC is to change the 3D text extrusion to have its own illumination. If I go to my 3D layer, which is the text layer, and look on the 3D panel, you can see that the Mars layer is actually broken down, as I mentioned before. So we've got the front inflation, the front bevel, but I also have the back bevel inflation, the back bevel material, and the back extrusion. All of these combined will enable me to create an illumination element part of this piece of text. So I go to my illumination and use the 32-bit color picker to choose an illumination color. So I'm gonna use a yellow. I'm gonna use quite a dark yellow because I'm gonna change the intensity by up to four stops. Maybe not. Just drag this down a little bit so I actually have some color. So you can see here's a plus color. This works really well in 32-bit mode, but I'm just gonna keep it for this example in 8-bit mode and press OK. Now the real world to test this, the real way to test this is by rendering and seeing what happens. So I'll take a small section of the actual scene and make sure I'm part from the 3D object. Draw a selection around this piece of text that I want to have the illumination on and render. And you can see there, if I render, if I just zoom in now, you can see there, if I'm rendering, you can see that the, there is illumination appearing on this other object. And that's because we've changed the illumination property to be plus four stops. But when that's fully rendered, that will bring all that illumination out. But let's make this more like a Mars scene now by adding some more layers. I'm just going to create a new layer and I'm going to place another object which is a different color. And I'm just going to find, so I'm going to use this one. So this is just a, a piece of abstract texture that I've shot on my camera. And that's fine. And choose a selection. I'm just going to blend that in using a blending mode, using the soft light blending mode. So you can see that nice kind of um, color I'm adding in. So it's, it's going to be more like Mars. So I need to add another entity in here and say place. I'm going to choose one that I already that I've used before called orange, the orange texture. Again, it's just a JPEG file, but it has these really nice swirls. So press the place button. I'm just going to make the size bigger and make it fit the scene. And I want to have that kind of murky look with those swirls over in the top corner. And again, press OK. Change to be soft light. And I can play around with these blending modes to see which best works for this scene. And I think Let's stay with soft light for now. But you can see there it's got a really nice kind of surreal feeling to this to this final scene. Maybe I need to just move things around a little bit. Maybe Roger is is too hidden, need to move him out. So again in 3D you move things around quite a bit and rotate him around. So have him as he's just outside this object. And the final thing to do is to render the whole scene. So just use a marquee and just select the whole scene and then render. And then you'll see the illumination appearing on the, on the little house on the corner. You see my shadows appearing where Roger's now sat and the sun is now catching Roger. And the whole thing looks like a bit of a, a Mars, Mars scene. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I certainly enjoy working with 3D. Um, and I hope you've seen some things that you can use in your in the real world in your in, in your job and 
and what you're doing with, with Photoshop around working with 3D. Thank you very much. I think we're going to open up now for questions and answers. And uh, if you'd like to talk, then that's great. Okay, so what? Qu so the question, the question came in from from the from the outside, and what the question is: What format can three D objects be imported? And actually, that's a great question. And we support um, quite a few objects. So if I just go to the three D menu and say New three D layer from File, at the bottom you've got the different formats. So you can see here you can bring in three D Studio, you can bring in Cinema four D, you can bring in Collada, Flash three D, Google Earth. And you can also bring in STL, like I brought in before, which is a 3D object, a 3D printed object. And you can also bring in OBJ. You can also extract the objects as OBJ and these formats as well. So they can interact and move across different software packages. So for example, in Photoshop for CC, you get um, Cinema 4D Lite as well as After Effects. So you can bring these objects into Cinema 4D and do some work with them and then bring you back into Photoshop for a bit of rendering. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, cool. Okay, so actually on the chat pod there is um, a link, and that link is um, a link to a feedback form. If you would um, fill in the feedback form for us, then we can learn from this experience and learn for the next these seminars, and make sure that the content's relevant, and, and make sure we can tailor to what um, you need as a um, as a consumer of Photoshop. So thank you very much. Um, that's been enjoyable today, and uh, see you soon.